Hello everyone, welcome to uh, this end of year planning session with me, Angela Fair. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, it is the last, uh, last fading days of 2023 and uh, moving into a new year at a breakneck pace. And um, it, we've had a lot of downtime <laughs> over the last week, a lot of time with family. And, um, and it's been really kind of nice to be in this kind of suspended place of taking a break. Uh, maybe you're feeling that way as well. Uh, just making sure I'm going to ramble a little bit, just making sure you can all hear me and then we'll dive into the planning session. But, uh, you know, when, one thing I've noticed and, uh, my art practice is a lot about noticing, paying attention to um, what's working, what's not working, where, where my best ideas come from, um, when I feel ready to plan and to take stock and inventory of where I've been. And uh, one thing I've really noticed is that when I'm having downtime, when I step away from the usual routine, um, I eat a lot better snacks, but I also uh, take more time to think about direction, where I've come from, where I'm going. Um, it feels like a way to step step back and think, um, you know, what's uh, what's next? And uh, that happens for me when I'm on vacation with my family. I always bring a notebook so I can um, <laughs> jot down ideas and thoughts and and because um, at some point, and it's not something I set out intentionally to do, but at some point I'm like, where is that notebook? I need to write down um, these ideas that are coming that are making giving me clarity because um, what I've noticed is that I tend to pile on a lot of stuff and um, in my art practice in my life uh, you know we all end up finding ourselves in a place where we need to declutter and uh, so I, I need a time of decluttering and uh, it seems to happen best for me when I am having downtime so here we are <laughs> um, just finishing off December and uh, having that kind of suspended time in between Christmas and New Year's uh, that feels like um, time doesn't exist a little bit. And it has felt like a bit of a planning time for me. Um, as we, um, I see someone commenting that the sound is low. I might be able to adjust that just a tiny bit. We'll see if that helps. I don't wanna go too far because then you're gonna get feedback. Uh, yeah, that's why we that's why we ramble for the first stretch uh, in the description below the video. You are uh, have access to a link that will take you to um, this worksheet and um, there it is. And this worksheet is uh, two, two things. It's a guide for you because the first um, half of the worksheet is um, me explaining what the questions are intended to do for you. And then the second half is simply the questions with spaces for you to fill out the answers um, as, as you like. And um, what I wanted to do is give you the opportunity, give myself the opportunity to evaluate the year that is past in a more intentional way and to use that evaluation uh, to celebrate, first of all, where we've come from, uh, what, what has been accomplished over the past year. And sometimes that involves looking a little deeper. And uh, I'm going to be asking you questions through, through, the, through the broadcast. If you're logged in um, to, I think it has to be a Google, Gmail or Google account um, in order to comment on YouTube. So if you're logged in, you should be able to comment um, and respond to the questions as I ask them. And we're going to take about an hour to do, to go, to walk through the worksheet, um, see how, see how far we get. And, uh, and then I also want to talk uh, really intentionally about planning for success in 2024 in a way that is about a lot more than just being productive. And, uh, and there's some really good reasons for that. Uh, okay. And uh, so if you don't have the worksheet, um, there is a link in the description below the video um, that will take you there. It's going to ask you to sign up. Uh, if you're already getting my weekly emails, uh, you're already signed up and it should be pretty straightforward to get uh, your hands on that worksheet. In fact, you should have already received it in your inbox last week and had some time to think about it. Um, if you're not already uh, on my mailing list, um, this will take you to uh, signing up for those weekly emails. Uh, those emails are intended to always leave you with something that can help you grow as an artist, but you are completely welcome to unsubscribe at any time. And um, we're going to, uh, I'm just going to bring up the comments here. Um, and I've got lots of hellos from all over the country. Um, 
we have, yeah, I, I'm going to start listing places and I always feel bad if I leave someone out. Um, we're going to start in Eastern Canada, Newfoundland. Um, I saw also uh, some, some people who live fairly close to me. I saw Edmonton, Alberta. Um, hi, Monica. Uh, I see uh, Pennsylvania, Finland, Ohio. Um, let's see, where else have we got? Maryland, Ontario. Hi, Dawn. Um, Miami, Asheville, North Carolina. Um, hi, Joan from Ontario, uh, Mary from Massachusetts, some really familiar names here too popping up. Um, hi from London, uh, Phoenix, yes, I bet it's a lot warmer there than here, although we've had a really wonderful mild winter. Another Phoenix, Georgia, Arizona, California, I saw South Africa, um, Brooklyn, New York, wonderful. Welcome <laughs> to all of you. Um, you know, it's interesting, we're all over the world, and yet we are also all at the end of the year, um, moving in, <laughs> some of us a little bit, few hours closer than others. Um, and I do feel like uh, for me, time, time is a very interesting tension for an artist. Uh, on the one hand, I have um, a sense that I'm settling in for the long haul. I'm an artist who, I'm, I'm 46, so, um, <laughs> and I often see artists reaching their, their real, peak of what they're able to share in terms of self-expression and technique in their 60s um, and often later. Um, I was just reading the other day that uh, there was an artist, um, and I don't remember her name, but she did her first exhibition and sold her first painting at the age of 86. And, and from there had na like major shows in, in big galleries. And so her career started um, late in life. And I think that's a wonderful thing for artists because we can have this idea that um, we can use all the time that's given to us. And so we have a sense um, that time is, <sighs> Time is something we get to use. Um, however much we have, we get to use right now and we get to think about um, what our future could be um, if we are leaning into that time we've been given. And um, we're also able to look back over <laughs> the past and have a relationship with time there and see how much, how far it's brought us. And I think this should apply to everyone, no matter when you started painting. And because I feel like I started young, I was 18 when I took my first uh, watercolor lesson. And, <laughs> um, and I don't know that that was necessarily an advantage. Technically, I've had a lot of, a lot of years to work with watercolor and get, um, develop an anticipation of what it does. But I also had so much growing up to do in terms of understanding my own voice, um, trusting myself, um, and approaching my work with self-compassion, which is really important for an artist. And when I look at my <laughs> year-end evaluation, uh, it, it is a, an exercise in self-compassion as well. And uh, so I'm, I'm just going to walk through this with you because um, it used to be that I would evaluate my year in terms of simply the paintings I felt good about. Um, was really proud of <laughs> and maybe there weren't very many of them and um, so then it could feel like you know I really didn't achieve what I'd hoped to achieve and I've learned that there's so many more metrics especially when you were talking about a long expanse of time I've been painting for 30 almost 30 years I think this is 29 years that I'm coming into um, my art practice and with that longer expanse of time um, it means that maybe giant transformations aren't going to happen, take place over a year, um, or maybe not every year. And so I need to be more nuanced um, in how I recognize my growth. And uh, so that was one thing I thought about as I thought about writing this, um, creating this planner for you and for myself. Um, I started with the idea of taking an inventory, um, not just paintings created and sketchbooks filled, but an inventory of action as well. You know, how was I showing up in my art practice this year? And was I showing up as a student? Was I taking workshops? And, and this year I did show up as a student in many ways. I took, um, I'm trying to think, I think it was three online workshops. And, um, and each of those was designed to, <laughs> each of those um, I approached with a different level of commitment. Uh, one workshop I signed up for in November and I just didn't have time to actually um, go through the content and it was an online workshop with an 
in-person element and I didn't show up for the in-person element um, and I still haven't watched the videos. <laughs> I've kind of followed along with, with that artist um, and hit the high points, but I still have yet to fully invest in that workshop and it's okay. Um, I, I have to recognize that sometimes sometimes that happens and the amount that I'm able to invest in in my own learning is going to sometimes be limited. Um, the workshop I took in April, I felt like I invested a lot more of my time in uh, and I see its influence in my paintings. And so, you know, that's a win for me. Um, I'm curious about you. Did you take workshops uh, in the last year? Where, where did you add to your learning? And uh, I'd love to, if, to have you share that in the comments. Uh, if you want to do that uh, here, I'll, I'll watch for your answers here. Um, another question I asked was, did you show your work publicly? How did you get out of your painting space, your studio space? and uh, you know bring your work into the view of others or did you and uh, not everyone has that as a priority and if you are very um vulnerable in regards to other people's voices impacting your work um, sometimes it's a really good idea to take a step back um, from from you know imposing other people's opinions on your art and uh, that's totally okay um yeah, Autumn says, I <laughs> bailed on your online workshop. It's still there for you, Autumn. Uh, you know, that's one thing I do make a priority <laughs> is that uh, if you're buying an online workshop for me, uh, I want you to be able to access it if you didn't get a chance to actually do the whole thing. But at the same time, I really, I know that there's a huge majority of online workshops that don't ever get completed. And we have to be careful of that. We have to be aware of that and actually make the time. It's a, there's a tension there. Um, yeah, Dawn commented that uh, she took my, she joined me in Cornwall when I taught in person. I've got f further on uh, in-person workshops happening in 2024 and I'm already planning for 2025. Um, Joan, you were there in Cornwall as well. Angela says, I entered my art into our local county fair as well as my local art show. Good for you. Congratulations. Uh, I saw another one. Deborah says, I took two online workshops. Caroline uh, said, I did find your joy with Louise Fletcher. Yeah, she has wonderful things to say for artist mindset to really help you find freedom as an artist. That's great. Um, Sherry took my workshop. <laughs> also feels like she didn't participate fully. You know, we take, I really believe we take what we're ready for. And that's one thing I want you to, to really recognize as you look back over your year. Um, I invested in this way. Sometimes simply investing in a workshop, even if you don't do it, can be a vote of confidence for you in your art. Um, you can say, you know what, it, my art matters enough to me that I'm going to, you know, invest in this direction. Um, and, and then do, do try to find the courage to show up and do it, and the time, of course. Uh, hi, Rachel. Yes, I, I remember you from Cornwall, of course. Um, oh, um, Larry says, I sent out well, watercolor postcards for Christmas. I've done it for a couple of years, and people expect them and look forward to them. Absolutely. That's a wonderful way to get your art out there without feeling the pressure of it being juried into a show. Um, Marianne says, I display my art through the guilds I belong to, art shows, cafes, village, town hall. Um, and she took Ian Fennelly's workshop. I've seen your art from Ian Fennelly's workshops. Um, amazing teacher. Uh, and you're creating amazing stuff from that. Um, oh, wonderful. Um, Donna says, I, um, you, you, yeah, you, sharing to show, to showing your work. Wonderful. Oh, um, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> see, I'm getting lost in the comments. Uh, and it's just wonderful to see. SK says, has anyone done travel workshops, going to Mexico for a week of workshop with an artist? We have a few artists who have traveled with me and they're here today. Um, Anne's been taking workshops online with Jean Haynes. Um, that's very, flu oh, her work is so fluid and beautiful. Um, and Anne's going to be joining me in Santa Fe. Wonderful. Okay, so um, I'm seeing really good um, feedback in the comments. Just thank you for sharing all these different things you're doing. In fact, talking about showing your work, um, Cheryl says, I did a desk calendar for friends for the new year. Um, I have my calendar that's um, a, a really, this is not only something that I get to give and share. I always send them out to people who I've been um, involved in business with, um, to friends and uh, sell them online and locally. 
but it also is a time for me in September when I put the calendar together of looking at the art I've created through the since the last calendar choosing paintings and it's a way of celebrating and seeing what I've what I've accomplished so a calendar um, some kind of compilation of work is a great way to do that one of um, the people interacting with me on social media commented that she does a book of her art that she's made through the year every year and that's a wonderful record as well um, so I, I, I do hope you'll take the time to just watch the comments uh, because there are ideas there for how to share your work uh, when you're ready to do so. Um, and also regarding, you know, where, where you might want to invest your learning, some really good referrals to different artists <laughs> um, who are teaching both online and in person. Um, it's challenging to get your work out there. And so, you know, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be a goal, um, but it is, I, I've, I've always found that I've learned a lot when I've started thinking about how I'm going to present my work publicly. Um, I learned a lot through reading. <laughs> so another area where I um, like to look at and evaluate is paying attention to where I've been um, feeding my mind with art books and um, which, you know, what's inspired me artistically. It's not always books by artists. Sometimes um, I get inspiration. I've been reading a lot on the creative process. So there's authors that I really love there. Um, my Amazon <laughs> shop is uh, full of book recommendations because I do just tend to, um, I get these little glimmers of insight just by reading the written word. And, uh, and then I love thinking about the artists who have inspired me to paint through the year. Um, how I'm creating a visual, um, I don't know, um, gallery really, um, feeding my, my eyes with different styles of art by different artists um, and really paying attention to what's being made by other artists and also um, what's been created historically. Um, when I first started painting, I had a very narrow um, idea of what good art looked like and uh, mostly it was real realism. And uh, I love the fact that my artistic vocabulary is so diverse. And so this is something else that I celebrate. Um, which artists have I discovered this year? Who's inspiring me? And um, you know, what does that maybe indicate uh, about the um, influences that are surrounding my work? And um, one of the questions I love here is my favorite artist paintings this year were, um, what art made you want to paint? Um, I can be inspired by a painting and yet it doesn't necessarily inspire me to paint. Um, I can love a painting, but it doesn't necessarily um, influence my work. Uh, who made me want to paint? Who made me look at their work and think, oh, that's a great idea. I should try something similar for my own art. And um, yeah, we're getting some further comments now. Book inspirations are popping up through the uh, through the chat here. Um, Poetic Woods by Anne Blockley. I was able to meet her this fall and get a signed copy of her Poetic Woods book. Um, wonderful insights into how um, her influence, uh, the forest inspires her art um, and influences even her, her life and her values. Um, Danny Gregory has a book, Art for Breakfast. Danny Gregory, um, very much about empowering artists to draw. And um, Monica's Reading the Gift of Being Yourself, a wonderful book that has encouraged me through, <laughs> through my own growth. Um, Creativity, A Short and Cheerful Guide by John Cleese. Oh, I think that would be a fun book to read. Uh, wonderful. I am reading um, Anne Lamott's book, Bird by Bird, which is a book on writing, but there's so much about the creative process there. I'm determined to finish it before the end of the year. Um, now, as we think about taking an inventory of your art practice, uh, I wanted to, I think a really good way to do this is after doing that little inventory, um, you know, what I saw in my work, how much work I created, which workshops I took or books I read or artists who inspired me, um, I, I love the idea of actually writing a paragraph or just a few sentences uh, describing how I would describe my area of focus this year. And, uh, you know, now that you've done this inventory <laughs> to take the time and say, okay, what does that indicate to me about what I was paying attention to? And when we look at what we're paying attention to, I think it becomes easier to evaluate our growth. And so, um, you know, if you're an artist who says, oh, you know what, 
I started all these paintings and I didn't finish anything. Um, we can feel bad about that. Or you can look at that and go, okay, what does that tell me about my artistic practice, um, about my area of focus and emphasis? If I'm all about the beginnings, how did that help me to grow? And um, instead of being unhappy with that, uh, you know, paying attention to your beginnings uh, says, I'm, I'm working foundationally. I'm thinking about the fundamentals, the underlying shapes that create a painting. Um, we haven't, you know, maybe I feel a little lost when it comes to bringing in those finishing details, but you know, I'm gonna be so strong in this area of the fundamentals. Uh, really, you know, that's valuable. That's uh, a twist, <laughs> a perspective to take that isn't about, well, I didn't finish any paintings, but it's that, that positive growth oriented mindset that's going to help you as you think about direction for the future. Um, did you see a theme in your art this year? Or did you jump all over the place in your approach? Um, for me, I uh, spent, you know, one thing that was really cool to see as I looked at my own journey was the sketchbooks that I filled because that's not something that has been a big part of my practice. And one reason I was filling more sketchbooks is that I was traveling more sketchbooks are portable and I made an intention to bring them with me as I traveled and uh, additionally I, I studied with artists who were working in sketchbooks. I brought a sketchbook and a bunch of pencils to my living room and I, I like to hang out with my family in the evenings and suddenly I had something I could do with my hands and so this little thing that um, was me trying to bring more art into my lifestyle um, it affected my work and I've had a lot more fun, um, not just with pencils and bringing more drawing into my painting practice, but in um, being able to work, have fun with it actually, not take it so seriously. Um, previously, my, my sketchbook practice was all about Angela doesn't know how to use a sketchbook. And suddenly now I'm like, Angela gets to have fun with a sketchbook. Um, it's not, oh, I know how to do this now. It's, oh, this is a place where I can play too. And uh, that happened because I, I let myself show up, um, not knowing what I was doing, but just determined to just put those put that little bit of time in. Um, and then I, I encourage you to spend time thinking about how you worked on improving your art. What strategies did you choose? And how did they, how are they helping you grow? Um, one of my favorite things uh, when I talk to artists about um, filling out paperwork, <laughs> not everybody's into it. Um, not every, everybody feels like they can journal, but uh, I think that there's uh, different ways of going about it that can be more empowering. Uh, so one way that I, I like to think about that is uh, making lists. I might not like writing paragraphs of descriptive sentences, but maybe I can make a bullet pointed list and um, write down some keywords that describe my work, my practice, uh, and do so in a way that's um, write freely, write the keywords, even if you feel like they're negative keywords. My practice this year was procrastination. Um, it was sloppy. Uh, it was, you know, too casual. Write it all down and then pay attention to what those keywords tell you um, in a non-judgmental way. If my practice was sloppy, um, what are some keywords that I can use to um, describe that in a way that's a little bit more positive? Um, let's think if something's sloppy it's free it's loose it's um raw <laughs> it, and i like uh it's playful and you know use those use those keywords and pay attention to the fact that there is um something that that can be indicated about your artistic style or leanings uh when you when you pay attention to those keywords um yeah <laughs> Uh, and I wanted to wrap up the idea of an inventory with uh, listing a, a big win for you this year. Was there a light bulb moment that happened that felt freeing or exciting? Was there a compliment you received? Was there an award you won? Um, none for me, but um, I think the biggest win for me was uh, I can think of I can think of a few moments. I can think of um, my workshop that I taught in April on Vancouver Island. Um, I felt a little more authentic and free in teaching that workshop than I have felt in the past. Um, it felt very much more like a, um, a companionable learning experience where we were learning in community 
Um, I get to be there as the instructor, but I also get to be alongside of all the all of the artists there. And I felt less responsibility for, um, I'm not sure how to describe it, um, being the person in charge, I guess, and much more freedom to be um, be with. Let's look at these issues that we struggle with as artists together. Um, let's come alongside of each other. And that was very freeing for me. Um, a light bulb moment for me in terms of my art practice uh, is here in my pencil cup. This little marker was in my pencil case when I went to Cornwall and the lid fell off. And so here I've got this soft brush tip marker. It's just got the most fun rubbery little tip on it. And um, I have other markers that are supposed to do the same same thing, but they just don't flex in quite the same way. And because it was dried out from having the cap off, I started using it to sketch and it was the most fun freeing thing. And it was an unlocking moment where I felt like I really get to do brave, audacious things with this silly little marker and and bring that into my art practice and it gets to be fun because I feel like this is fun and so that was a light bulb moment for me and it's something that's unlocked my um, art practice in a lot of other ways and um, anything that frees me up uh, and this is something I pay attention to anything that feels like freedom is um, <laughs> the things I want to invite into my art practice. And I pay attention to the times when I feel less free and always work to fight against that. That's my art practice in a nutshell as Angela gets to teach herself how to be free. Um, oh, I'm seeing some wins popping up this year. Let's take a look. Um, Dahlia says, I've shifted from despairing to determined this year. Uh, I love that. That's a, that's a big shift. Um, and actually, when I talk about this idea that you know sometimes there aren't there are very subtle changes that happen in a year sometimes it takes um, the realization of a moment to shift that mindset and i think in terms of mindset that is actually where we can see those major changes happen in our art practice um, that light bulb moment of oh i get to do this my way can be transformative and i i think this year was like that for me in many ways um, I look back to 2013 and that was a big, big freedom moment for me as well. Um, oh, Nautilus says, I was hired to illustrate a children's book. That is awesome. How's it going? <laughs> um, that That's a huge win. Um, and uh, <laughs> I was looking at, I was watching a cooking show and it was one of those cooking competitions and you win at the end by being offered a job. And it just looks like so much work. And yet as artists, I think that's our wins too. We're offered um, or we receive these opportunities to get to make the art we love to make. Um, other, other people might see it as work, but for us, it's, you know, it brings us deep joy. Um, Tana says, big win for me, actually sketching in my sketchbook and being content with the results, however imperfect. Absolutely. Um, Lindsay, to look inward and realize that my mindset was turning away from where I wanted it to go. So I reset and am in a much better place now. Absolutely. Uh, I come to the studio and I want to check in with my heart. Um, you know, <laughs> am I squishing myself into a box that's not where I want to be? Um, Monica says, being brave and putting my art out into public view. Um, even a piece displayed in front of a local downtown business. Yes, wonderful. I sold a plein air painting of a lake view to a person whose lake house was in the background, says Pat. Um, Tara says, I've shifted from am I good enough to I get to decide exactly what I want to do here. And I can approach it with a professional, purposeful attitude. Yes. And I believe that when we... Um, when we recognize just how much we get to choose in our art practice, um, <laughs> I don't get to choose necessarily um, whether or not every decision I make is going to be the decision I plan for it to be. Um, I don't get to choose how quickly I will master a certain technique or skill. Um, I don't, you know, there's a lot I, I don't get a say in, but I do get to, to choose how I'm going to um, show up in my art practice. And um, as we, as you go through this planner, what, what starts to happen is you come to a place of being able to plan for the year ahead. And the problem with 2024 is none of us know what's going to happen in 2024. Um, and so as we look over the past and make goals for the future, I 
really encourage you to be intentional about making room for whatever your life happens to throw at you. For me, that means that my art practice and the goals I set are principle based more than, um, again, productivity based. Um, before we go there, actually, I, I want to really encourage you if you're using this worksheet at all, and even if you're not, take the time and write down this sentence. I celebrate my artistic journey over the past year with gratitude. I celebrate my artistic journey over the past year with gratitude. Write it down and then finish that sentence. Um, it's actually a complete sentence, but I want you to keep going. Take it further. Um, for me, it was, you know, for the many ideas that sparked new paintings, for the beginnings I explored, and the new ideas that I developed with curiosity and enthusiasm, for the way I allowed myself to open my heart to what I was creating and created a space that was safe for me to show up with curiosity and non-judgment. Um, I celebrate my willingness to begin something new and to step into the unknown over and over again with every new painting. And I honor the growth that was created this year, even when I don't always recognize what it is. I'm deeply thankful for my art practice and I want to take the time to recognize that, um, that it's so much more than just, you know, how did my paintings turn out? Um, and I, I think, I think that's just, it's, it's a, we're in a time, a week of suspended animation for many of us. Um, what a really good time to celebrate with gratitude how far you've come as an artist. And as I think about the past year and celebrate it with gratitude, um, I can also see that it's about much more than um, any single painting. And um, actually back in February, um, I had an opportunity to um, be the art provider for a law office in town. Uh, they were setting up in town. She wanted art by one artist to, to cover their space. And um, in the course of about two weeks, I had to pu I pulled together, I think about 18 paintings to hang on their walls. And she wanted all of my bravest pieces, all of my biggest paintings, things that I had never shown anybody are hanging in this law office. And that was a huge victory for me. Um, and yet that's, that hasn't really, that didn't pop into my mind until just now, because it's been about so much more, um, it's been about what's been happening in my heart. and. If I'm looking at the art that went to that law office, it's it's not about the the dollars that you exchanged hands in, in exchange for this, this these paintings. Um, it's an art rental program, so it's going to be an ongoing um, relationship. But um, it's it's way more about the fact that when she looked at my abstract pieces and said, "Yes, I want more of those," um, how freeing that was for me. Um, how much it meant to me to have someone else look at the things that felt vulnerable um, and maybe no one's going to understand this and have her see something in them, recognize it and desire it. So that meant a lot and I'm really thankful for, for those things, those little keys um, that helped me step into this year with more courage and uh, vulnerability and authenticity. Things like that made a difference. And it helps me as I think about setting my intention for the year ahead. What would I like to follow through on uh, from the previous year? Are there areas of growth that need to be carried forward? Are there changes I would like to make to my creative practice? Um, it, how can I set measurable and achievable goals to see those changes take place? Uh, maybe it's, um, I'm trying to think here. Uh, I really am trying to focus on the idea of pacing myself, not working with urgency. And um, maybe that means really settling into this idea of the body of work I'm creating being not just something I'm creating this year, um, but just everything informing the, the year to come. And then what would I like to learn in the year ahead? Are there new techniques I'd like to try, new mediums I'd like to explore? Are there subjects I'd like to explore? And uh, I was reading um, through an art magazine the other day and there was a figurative artist there and I just thought, you know, I am still not interested in painting portraits or figures. It's not, you know, it's not a direction I want to take. And, you know, that was just clarifying to me. I'm really happy with um, the subject matter I've been choosing and I can stay there and rest in that. Um, 
And then who would I like to learn from in the year ahead? And of course, this is where I get to tell you that I'm teaching workshops. I've got online courses coming. Um, so if you want to learn from me, there's opportunity to do that. And I'll be talking about my, um, my seven month program uh, coming up in just a few minutes. But uh, this idea that there are voices that I would like to speak into my art practice and, and who would I like that to be? Who's my bucket list artist to learn from? And uh, how can I how can I maybe uh, welcome more of their work into my life, even just here in my own studio? Uh, there's um, it's, it's actually really wonderful the way uh, we can follow certain artists on, on Instagram and be have this wonderful diet of whatever they're making that's new and fresh um, popping into our newsfeed because you know they're sharing it and uh, it's inspiring us so uh, that's one thing I really love about um, following contemporary artists is uh, being able to see their own growth over the years and uh, I try to follow artists who remind me to be brave and uh, <laughs> Also, let's take that time, bullet list people, um, list your keywords or themes that you would like to describe your work in the year ahead. Um, you know, we've looked at using keywords to describe how 2023 has been. But as you think about 2024, what would you like to be a descriptor of your art practice, of your approach to creating art, or of your art itself? What... Um, you know, for me, I, I keep saying freedom, artists who remind me to be brave. And I want to make art that is helps other people to feel free and courageous. And, um, and I just, you know, that, that means the problem with that you know, means that I have to embrace the other side of it. And that's leaping into the unknown. People who are brave are people who are taking risks. Um, having freedom means, you know, just not having a lot of parameters or boundaries. And so I get to show up in my art practice on a regular basis and think, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not sure what direction this is taking, but I'm just going to show up and give myself permission to just be in this kind of open, really open space and let the wind blow through. Uh, and then, uh, if you want to share your work more, um, if you have goals that involve getting your art out in front of other people, um, what would that look like? What's an achievable goal you can set? And this is probably the only really measurable um, goal, uh, something that feels tangible in this entire planner is, you know, I would like to create a website to show my work. I would like to, you know, list paintings on Etsy. I would like to enter one art show or have my art accepted into a, you know, a regional, state, national competition. Uh, those are goals that you can set. Uh, last 2022, I think, I determined that I was going to enter 100 juried shows um, and just keep showing, showing my art um, entering it in shows, hoping, you know, that I'd, if I entered a hundred shows, I'd be accepted into a few. And um, rather than feeling devastated by every, every rejection I got. And um, what I learned in 2022, I did not enter a hundred shows. Um, I might have entered a dozen. But I started to realize that I don't think this is where I want to be. Um, when I enter a national show, for example, I get to submit maybe a couple of paintings and only one is going to be chosen. So all of my reputation as an artist has to show up in that single painting. And that's not what my art is about. And when I realized that, um, <laughs> that my body of work says who I am and what I believe in and what I care about as an artist. And I, I feel like I would much rather show, you know, multiple paintings that tell a story of, um, this, uh, this idea of freedom, I don't think it necessarily shows up in a single painting in the same way. And when I realized that, suddenly it freed me from this idea that, oh, Angela needs to be, in order for Angela to feel successful, she needs to enter these, these big major shows. Um, it was very freeing to me to realize, oh no, my body of work speaks for me, not a single painting. And, um, you know, that might change in the future, but it, it gave me permission then to drop the idea of having to enter a hundred shows. It's a lot of entry fees. And uh, just to be able to say, no, 
people who know me, who have built a relationship with me, my body of work speaks through that and not just one painting that uh, may or may not get the message across. So that was very freeing for me. Um, <clears throat> and then finishing the worksheet with a statement, I will make this year, 2024, <laughs> rich with creativity and learning by. How am I going to create an environment that is rich for me? And this is so about so much more than your paintings. It's about your heart. And for me, I, I feel like um, I don't make, I, I probably the amount of time I have to spend in painting is not going to dramatically change from whatever it was last year. Um, I can tell you that I never get as much time to paint as I would like. Um, very few people do. And I cannot determine whether or not I'm going to um, get new opportunities to show my work, whether I'm going to be recognized in some way by, you know, the fancy people. Um, and maybe, I, I can't even guarantee that I'm going to finish something that is just masterpiece worthy this year, that feels like um, it shows my heart in just a really unhindered way. I can't promise any of those things. So I cannot make those my metrics. I Rather, I want to be intentional about making my individual painting time, um, however many minutes I get today or tomorrow or this week, um, to make those fulfilling, heart prioritizing, um, meaningful for me, the artist. And uh, when, I, when I make that my metric, uh, then it's, you know, it's not about how much time I have, but you know, how, I, how I show up in that time and giving myself the freedom to, to really um, celebrate that. And this is hard. It's easy to say. Uh, it's easy to say I prioritize my heart and my art practice. But the fact of the matter is, is that we come in to create with a lot of pressure. Um, because uh, I tend to think of it, um, for me, I go back to childhood and that freedom that um, children will have in creating. They'll cover a painting in crayon scrawls, paper in crayon scrawls, um, and then they'll show up and show it to you with pride and authority. <laughs> and um, they're completely confident in what they've made um, up until a certain age. And then we start to change and we start to realize that not everybody cares about what we do. And we start to realize that not everybody thinks what we're doing is good enough. And we start to become caregivers and in relationship with people who need us and uh, have expectations of us. And um, <laughs> all of these things, and then we start to put expectations on ourselves. And all of these things can hinder us when we come into the art practice. Um, that feeling of could, should, have to, um, that can really put pressure on your art practice. And so this idea of prioritizing your heart is, um, for me at least, um, it takes a lot of attention um, <laughs> really to, to say, okay, you know, I'm not feeling joyful or satisfied or fulfilled in my art practice today. So what am I carrying with me that shouldn't be in here that's holding me back? And um, understanding those things, um, it's a battle sometimes. And uh, that's, why, that's why I teach the way I do. That's why I make this worksheet um, and trying to um, think beyond um, the metrics that are, you know, so fun to show up on social media uh, or so... Uh, you know, we've got right now, everybody's posting their top nine paintings of the year. Uh, and <laughs> you might you might not feel like you had made nine paintings this year um, or that your nine don't look as good as, you know, that other person's nine or however however many we decide to, to celebrate. And your, your milestones don't look as good as anyone else's. And um, when it comes to milestones, even that, um, I think we, we can see how quickly... Uh, outside, outside things come in to hold the art practice back because um, what happens the first time we hear somebody's some you know someone else who's making art alongside of us has received some opportunity um, as much as we want to celebrate what they're what they what they're succeeding in there's also that little voice that's saying well what about me <laughs> you know when will it be my turn um, and. And it's that little voice, the what about me voice, I think, that can often get in the way of us really feeling free to make the art we're meant to make. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Michaela says, if I'm just starting in my 60s, there's hope. Absolutely. You have many, <laughs> um, many wonderful painting experiences ahead of you. Um, that is the hope. I mean, none of us know how much time we get. And that's why I think it is so important to make the, your art practice today um, as enriching for you as possible, whether it's that you want your art practice to be joyful <laughs> um, or just really um, a time where the world falls away, where you can just be present for yourself. Um, to make it that safe place. To me, that's just so important because it's a way of valuing who I am and um, showing up for myself. And I just think that's that's so that's so important. And it, that's what my art is about. And the funny thing is, you know, I talked about um, how what I my art is not just about one painting because it is a whole life practice. Of I get to care about the things I care about and then I get to show up in my paintings and really care about them um, unashamedly and uh, it's extremely freeing. So I want to just talk for a minute about how I can maybe help you in the year ahead. Um, first of all, I have a, my website is the uh, heartledartist.com. There's a link in the description below the video. And what I'm going to be doing is for the first half of 2024, uh, I want to work with artists who are at a place where you've been making art uh, and maybe following a lot of tutorials, <laughs> building technique, and you're starting to get enough of a handle on your techniques that you're realizing that your own personal voice uh, needs to find a way to come out into your art. It doesn't happen very well when you're following step-by-step -step tutorials, does it? Uh, and this idea of moving into this independent art practice is... Um, it's a big transition. It's definitely a transition. <laughs> and it's a transition you, in, very many, in a lot of ways, you need to take it on your own because nobody can tell you um, what your most authentic um, heart prioritizing art looks like for you. The, nobody can know that except for you. And you've seen that. Um, I, I see in the comments someone commenting that, you know, if I like one area of the painting, um, that you know that's a success to me and it's true it's um there's that idea of sometimes you look at your painting and you recognize one little piece of it that's just like that looks like that that matters to me and those <laughs> those little glimmers that's those are showing you the artist that you're that you that you want to be um the artist that your heart recognizes and finding that um finding that voice it depends on you it depends on you getting the other people out of the way and the self-criticism out of the way um, so that that little glimmer of recognition can be opened up to happen more and more with less other noise to block it. And uh, I care about this. I care about it for me. And because it matters, has mattered so much to me, I, I care about it for you as well. Uh, so I want to spend so much more of my time teaching about artist identity this idea that you can look at your art practice and say, this is what matters to me. And this is how I want it to be reflected in my work. Uh, I have a four week course starting January 3rd, uh, the Heart Led Artist Pathway. And it's an introduction to um, what we'll be digging into even deeper for six months starting in February, um, which is called the Heart Led Artist Journey, <laughs> which just makes sense. We're gonna start with the pathway, start a little ways down the path of just identifying um, your heart in your art. Um, also choosing um, skill development with a focus on skill development that will support where you want to take your work. Um, this isn't just for watercolor artists, but artists in all disciplines, um, seeking that authentic voice, seeking that freedom to create and show up in your work with authenticity and vulnerability. It is vulnerable. Uh, the Heart Led Artist Pathway, uh, there's a link in the description below the video, and uh, it's, it's just four weeks. Uh, it really, not everyone thinks like me, um, and so this is an opportunity for you to get a taste of what the Heart Led Artist Journey, the six-month program, looks like. Um, I want to encourage you to, to take a look at the, at the course. Um, just tap the link in the description. Um, take a look at the description there. I'm just gonna walk through um, the principles that support that program. Um, number one, I think, uh, is starting by identifying, learning how to identify the things that are blocking you. Uh, any limiting beliefs <laughs> that um, you know an artist, a true artist, a good artist, a better artist, an artist with more experience should be doing this. 
um, learning how to let go of that so that you can um, have more freedom. Um, additionally, I think this idea of approaching your art as a lifelong student of art. Um, the best artists that I know are artists who are all, who are talking at, like students. They're saying, I don't have all the answers and I'm continually looking for um, the next, you know, the next area where I need to grow. Um, the skilled artist mindset is one of the, being a self-directed student. You're not leaning on someone else to tell you what you need to do next, but you're attuned to um, the, the next, you know, the next step for you, um, what your art needs, and you're approaching it with intentionality um, and an idea that I can do this. <laughs> um, I can teach myself how to paint in a way that's resonant for me. Um, I think we create learning environments uh, as uh, as growing, as artists who are growing and heart prioritizing, we want to create an environment that invites diversity into the creative practice. Um, that's going to really help you grow. And a thriving independent artist is one who knows what kind of process helps them thrive. What is going to support your art and what's going to hold you back? Um, you want to seek to create an environment that just makes you want to love to paint. Uh, and I will share with you in the Heartlet Artist Pathway how I create a safe space for my heart to be prioritized. Um, even though I'm, I'm working as a professional artist, um, it, and that can feel competitive and stifling to my creativity sometimes. And so this idea of prioritizing my heart can kind of war with um, that, the, the expectations that we think that we have as an artist in business. And um, over... The four weeks in January as I share um, four principles for growth in the Heart Led Artist Pathway, we're really going to be digging into um, what makes you tick as an artist. The best art is diverse and every artist should feel free to show up as themselves. Uh, we need all those different voices to create that beautiful community of heart prioritizing artists. Um, the I'm just going to take a look at the questions here in just a moment. Um, the Heart Led Artist Pathway opens January 3rd is when the first lessons in week one roll out. Um, we'll be having a, a live discussion group um, in the third week of the course um, where we'll be talking about some of the ideas that have been coming up. Um, there's a classroom section uh, with the discussion pages where you can leave comments and share what you're learning and learn from other students as well. And then we wrap it up with a, another live uh, discussion group at the end of the at the end of the month. And uh, at the one thing I want to mention is if you've been thinking about joining the six month program, which is starting in February, this heart led artist pathway is a requirement for that course. I don't want anyone starting in February not really knowing what to expect. And the heart led artist pathway is what's going to get you there. It's going to show you how I teach um, and how um, I structure the course. Uh, so that you can uh, learn how to let your own artistic identity shine through, how you can structure your skill development and learn from other artists. Um, I've really tried to make this as expansive as possible. And one way that happens is when um, the students in the course are sharing in the classroom part of the, of the course, um, we really have some amazing give and take as we talk about what's resonating, what isn't, um, challenge each other's ideas and, um, it's, it's kind of just amazing to see. Um, oh, Dahlia is asking, if we did the course in November, can we follow along again in January? Yes, Dahlia, I'll be sending an email about that. You don't need to purchase anything else. Um, so I'll be sending an email to anyone who took the course in November um, so that you can uh, follow along and kind of have that refresher before we move into the heart -led artist journey in February. Um, how much time commitment is involved in the pathway course? I, um, I think it's, it's less than an hour of video content per week, um, where the, where I share the lessons, uh, and the lectures in the course. And then I do ask that you be actively painting or creating, um, during the week as well. So, um, if you're able to commit to, um, two or three painting sessions per week, ideally, short painting sessions, uh, then you should be able to easily keep pace with the course. And um, Valerie, thank you for that lovely comment. I really appreciate that. Um, Tannis is asking, is it totally live or pre-recorded? 90% um, of the course is pre-recorded. There are two 
um, Zoom discussion groups. And generally with the size of the group, uh, it's mostly, um, we mostly use the chat for, for our back and forth in the discussion group. It's more of a live lecture um, where I'm sharing um, and reviewing the feedback that um, the different artists in the course have been sharing. Um, it just, it's not like a tiny intimate group, um, but it is, uh, there, there, is, there are those two live sessions that are optional. Um, if you want critique, may you have it? No, we don't offer critique in these in these courses, Lila. Um, and I'm very intentional about that because I don't think that my opinion matters, um, what your art looks like. I think your opinion matters and you um, need to be really clear on what matters to you in your art um, before you start inviting a lot of critique and feedback into it. Um, there are also amazing in-person communities where you can um, build relationships with artists who get to know you as a person uh, and then also are able to you know offer feedback into your work which I think is a lot more effective than than having me do it when I you know have very limited um, ability to build relationships with you individually it's very hard for any for me to know your motivation and so then I'm only critiquing based on design and I don't know that much about design I'm I really want to focus on the heart of part of my art. And uh, so those, those are reasons why I don't do critiques. Um, yeah, Dawn, I appreciate that feedback uh, regarding the time investment in the course. Uh, Dawn's commented that the videos don't take much time, but the questions are rich. I do, I'm doing it again because I want to go slow. I was so inspired to paint every day. That's, thank you, Dawn, for sharing that. That's, um, Good feedback from someone who's taken the course and uh, I appreciate that um, yeah it generally uh, in the classroom area is a place where you can post your work um, while you're taking the course and offer and, and receive some give and take um, always the best feedback you're going to get is when you offer um, good insight and descriptions as you share your work. Um, and I would encourage you to do that anytime you're asking someone to critique your art. We're just going to go off into that little tangent. Um, we do ourselves a disservice when we don't speak about what we care about and why our art, paint, why our art matters to us. When you show someone your painting and say, I'd love a critique, this is, but then before you get that critique, say, this is what I love about the painting. This is what I think is strong, but I have questions about this area or this subject or this color. Um, it gives them actually a, somewhere to start um, and a bit more of an understanding of what your intention is for the painting. So uh, I think that's really important. Um, yeah, I appreciate this, wonderful. Um, the course is very much more focused on artist identity and mindset. Um, this idea that um, if I just make a great painting, I'll feel better about my art is backwards. Um, you make a great painting, you might feel good about it for a while, but at the core of um, Artist identity is this idea that, you know, am I good enough? Can I stay, can I continue to be that good? Um, you know, is what I'm doing today um, going, am I gonna keep growing? Is it gonna matter? Uh, it's it's um, perpetuating, it's a perpetuating issue until you start to learn to make your art, a, art practice a place where you are allowed to just be where you're at right now and really celebrate that and find joy in it. Uh, I'm going to scooch over just for a second. I want to show you what's on my wall here because there's two very different paintings. And, um, and this is a, just a little reflection of how I, how I work in my art practice. Um, the dark one on the far side is um, graphite powder, actually, uh, that I sprinkled on my painting. I let a lot of water happen. It's a monochromatic painting. Um, and I love the boldness and the texture of it, um, which you, of course you can only see a little bit of that from this distance. The second one is something I painted yesterday and um, it was a watercolor on Yupo, which is a plastic paper. And I worked with a lot of crayon and a lot of, um, with Yupo you can't really touch any area of the painting more than once. And uh, so um, this was an exercise in not being fussy and uh, I love the freedom and the some of the big shapes in it and I came back to the painting after 
um, this morning actually, not knowing what I would find because Yupo takes a long time to dry and it often looks totally different once it's dry. And um, what, I've, what I'm doing is I'm creating a practice where I'm allowed to do these experiments that seem totally disconnected. And, um, and then also, while we're at it, um, behind me I've got this painting and this one I'm going to throw away and not finish because it is, it's the same thing I've been painting for years and I'm tired of it. <laughs> and so I'm realizing about myself that I need to give myself permission. I need to break new ground because what I did last year or two years ago or five years ago, it doesn't reach my heart in the way it did five years ago. Not anymore. And so having that freedom to say, oh, I feel myself falling into old habits that aren't resonating anymore. Huge freedom there. I'm really excited about it. I don't know what that means for what 2024's art is going to look like. Um, but it, one thing I've been thinking about a lot is um, I'm going to give myself permission to declutter a lot. <laughs> um, and that means throwing away some old paintings that I've been saving. And I don't throw away art very often. But this is my year where I'm going to be a little bit ruthless about that. If I've held on to a painting for five years and I haven't, it doesn't bring me joy anymore, it's gone. And um, I don't want to have a scarcity mindset that says, well, maybe somebody else will want it one day. Um, nope, it's not ringing a bell for me anymore. It's going away. And uh, just be giving myself permission to let go of things that aren't serving me anymore is a big part of this artistic practice. Okay. So um, for those of you who are on my email list, you're going to be getting a follow-up email in um, I think tomorrow and I'll just be um, sharing a little bit of a recap and reminding you about the Heartlet Artist Pathway. If you haven't signed up yet that um, January 3rd is going to be here before you know it and um, it's not it's not a huge investment of your time because this is a pretty holistic approach to watercolor um, your, or to art. Um, you're going to want to be making art you know in the time that you have just like you're doing now. Um, but you're also going to be thinking a lot about the questions um, that I'm sharing, the things that um, you want to define your artistic practice and your artistic identity. And that's something you can do when you're in your car or taking a walk or lying in bed at night and uh, just recognizing how what I care about in the real world affects how I approach my art um, in the studio as well. And... Um, yeah, wonderful comments. I wish I had more time to just um, share um, share more of what's being said in in the comments here. I appreciate it so much, and um, I do um, hope to to connect with you in the new year as we go through this artist journey. Uh, I just want you to, to encourage you, whatever your whatever your art practice, whatever you're making or planning to make this year. Think about what you care about in terms of your values and your priorities and then ask yourself how those things are reflected in your artistic practice in the permission you give yourself to make the art you're meant to make today and um, if your values the things you say you care about line up with how you show up in the studio you're going to be making art you truly love and are deeply excited about and um, i'm excited about that for you too uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, don't forget to uh, tap that link in the description if you want to find out more about the Heartled Artist Pathway. Um, January is going to be such an um, inspiring month for um, my artists there. Um, not always an easy month because we have to let go of things that aren't serving us. Um, and often those things feel like they keep us safe. But uh, it's, it's so freeing to um, kind of take down chop down some of those sacred cows, um, mixing my metaphors here, and, um, and find the freedom that lies behind all the things that we do to try to protect ourselves from our fear of failure and all of, all of the baggage. Um, thank you for joining me and listening a little bit to my story, um, taking uh, that little look at behind the scenes in my art practice uh, and some of the processes that, and things that I've learned over the last year and a bit. Um, it's... I could go on and on and on. It's been such a growth-filled year for me, really humblingly growth-filled. Um, and uh, I'm just, I'm super thankful for it. I uh, have no idea what it means for 2024, but uh, I can step into this new year with a lot of anticipation. I hope you can too. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you again, hopefully very soon. Uh, 
yeah, bye for now.